Hey everybody, welcome to the second episode of the Bag Collection Podcast. My guest today is Dag Ferch. He is very well known for playing the young Michael Myers in Rob Zombie's Halloween, as well as doing other projects such as Ditch Party and Hancock, and now he's even working on rap music. Highly recommend going and checking out his music. It's awesome. And I just hope you guys enjoy this little interview that we had together. It was great to talk to him. And yeah, so enjoy the episode and I can't wait for you guys to see more. Um. How about now? I still can't hear you, though. Can you hear me now? Now Now I can. There we go. Perfect. Awesome. (laughs) How are you? I'm chilling. How about you? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm I'm happy you were able to do this. I've been watching you since I was young, so it's almost like we grew up together in a weird way. (laughs) Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll just jump right into it. I only have a couple questions for you. Um, so my first one is, of course, you're very well known to play the young Michael Myers, which was amazing. So, um, because you were so young, was there anything that you were overwhelmed with or scared of when you were working on set? Nah, I had been acting since I was, since I could speak, you know, it started with, uh, little church plays and stuff like that to, to bigger plays, to student films, to independent films. To, so about seven years of grinding before I got Halloween. So, you know, it was just another role. Um, pretty fun one, too. I like to say it's not every day you get paid to kill people and you don't have to live with killing anybody. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know I exactly. mean? Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, how was it with working with Rob, too? Because, like, he's definitely one of my, like, bucket list people that I would personally love to work with, too. And I heard he's very chill to work with. Wonderful director. Yeah, extremely chill. Um I love improvising and he basically just chooses, you know, his solid set of actors and, you know, he'll be like, so, you know, the idea for this shot, you know, A to B, you know, your character, do do your shit. You feel me? And I like that because that fucking, that lets the, the actor bring their art sparks into it too. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just like, okay, I'm the, I'm the robot who has now assumed this personality doing what I'm told, you know, like it's letting me have fun with it. Awesome. I love that. Because it's, it's uh, to me, I guess it would be definitely easier to be able to improv and let the actor, well, not the actor, the director, like, just kind of let you do what you got to do instead of being like, yeah. like, you have to do this and that, because then that puts a lot more pressure on you. Totally. I've, I've worked with a couple directors where they'll, they'll, they'll say cut if you forgot the word the or something, something so small, you know, and it's just no. like, dude, I was vibing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Some directors are, they can be crazy for sure. No. Um, so I recently was able to watch ditch party and I was, that was, that was, I was, wow. That was, it was honestly a pretty great film. The plot was great. This, the character you played, I, I would love to know, like, did, was that hard for you to play? Cause I know that it brought up a lot of sensitive subjects. So was, was, I- they're like pressure on you to portray it in a certain way or anything. I just like being, I like, I like getting weird, you know, like, I like, <laughs> like just letting, letting it all go and shit. And like, at like, that's, that's one of the things I used for Halloween too, is because I was bullied most of my school life, you know, even after Halloween, like in the, the little bit of high school I went to, like it was, you know, it was all fake. It was a bunch of bullying shit, you know? So right. like it, it it was easy to like you know like take that for what it was what I know it as you know what I'm saying the pain and shit like I've cried because like a bully picked me up in like third grade and like smashed me on the ground type shit you know what I'm saying wow. yeah like yeah. no yeah I get that yeah so it's you know you just you know you use your life and it's it's like this with any art you know what I'm saying you use your life as the fuel for it like where's that inspiration yeah. Love that. Love that. Yeah. I, yeah, I definitely love Ditch Party. So bravo on that role for sure. Cause I, I mean, I've obviously never played a role like that. And I, it's, it's weird. Cause then you you could either use it or you take the pressure. It's, it's being an actor can be crazy and weird sometimes, but it's the fun and what you, what you get to work on and such. Um, so you worked with Will Smith, you were in Hancock, obviously. So yeah. you had a French accent in that film. So mm-hmm. did you have to take time to learn that? Or was that easy for you to, you know, work on? 
kindergarten through eighth grade, I went to a French immersion school. Um, so kindergarten through mm -hmm. third grade, I didn't have any English classes at all. That's like, yeah, they just immersed your ass in it type shit. So like, I, I, I'd been speaking French for a while. When they posted the audition, they wanted somebody who had lived in France for like two years. But at that point, I was in like sixth or seventh grade. So I had, I had taken, you know, like seven or eight years of French. So taking seven or eight years of French is about the same as living in France for two years, I'd say, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I actually did ask my third grade teacher before going into the audition to help with the accent stuff. And it was funny because, you know, we had to say asshole and stuff and we, yeah. we did it in his, we did it in his classroom, like after school type shit. But he, every time he had to say it, he'd like, kind of like look out the windows. He'd be like, okay, so I saw yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I love that. That's so cool. Um, so now you've been working a lot on music and I must say you guys are pretty dope music dude. I love it. So um, I, I watched I watch some of your lives too when you do your live concerts. I think that's great too just because you know we're in quarantine now. We can't go to concerts. We can't meet people. So it's I think that's great. So what inspired you or who inspired you to get into music specifically rap and uh like what is your process when you write okay well i've been i've been involved in music most of my life um by the time i was like five or six i was playing piano and like it was like the classical shit you know what i'm saying so like i, I could play some like beethoven and mozart pieces or whatever awesome. but like i can't play that shit anymore <laughs> but yeah. that, that I took a break on that and that went turned into guitar because everybody wants to play guitar. And then that turned into bass because I really like bass. And then that turned into drums for a while, for a few years. Then I took another break and then I had a brain injury when I was 16. And um, when I came out of that, it was, uh, you know, it was a mosh pit actually. Um, got um, knocked out. Yeah, I was in a coma for three weeks. I, uh, they took out this part of my skull for six months because my brain was so swollen. Uh, five emergency brain surgeries. I had to relearn how to walk. Like, yeah, mm. but I woke up and I wanted to rap. I've, like I said, music has always been part of my life. I was also born and raised in a hood. Um, I'm born and raised in San Diego. I think everybody likes to like idolize San Diego, but San Diego is a lot more hood than people give it credit for. Like, you know, we got our couple nice gems scattered throughout San Diego that are really nice, but like it's, it's hood as fuck. So I was born and raised on like the blade is what it's called. When you can go to the blade, El Cajon Boulevard, you know what I'm saying? For like mm -hmm. crack and prostitutes type shit. So, you know, it's always been part of, you know, that like, I think it's kind of like, it was cool. Cause I had like the best of both worlds. Like I was raised by my single mom. Right. And she tried right. to do the best by me. She took, she uh, had me baptized as a Mormon when I was eight. I'm not Mormon anymore, but you know, it was, it was good. They're, they're good people. A little two in the box for me, but just, all around good people um but then you know when i was hanging out with my homies we were all just doing a bunch of hoodlum shit skating around fucking shit up you know <laughs> right <laughs> so uh, but anyways yeah i just i woke up from that coma and i wanted i wanted to rap and i was garbage i was really 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 bad but the passion was there so i just practiced and that's that's with anything in life if you just do it every day you will get good no matter mm -hmm. what and i think it's cool because there's no such thing as per uh, perfection so like mm -hmm. There's no, there's no stop on the steady progression if you just continuously practice your right. stuff. And so I was rapping and then from like 16 to 19 and then at about 19, I started producing as well because I knew I was garbage and like no one wanted to give me any beats and I, I knew I was garbage so I didn't spend money on beats for myself. So I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna teach myself how to make some beats. Wow. Um, and then you know, just keep on practicing during, during, from when I started to now, there was a four-year period where I'd freestyle every day, at least on one beat, you know? That's sick, dude. Honestly, that's great. Um, right? And then and now, you recently got signed, got too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got I got signed to – I'm with Sony Music, 5050 uh, Global Music, BMG, The Orchard. Um, and uh, probably around Halloween time, I got a song coming out with Tech 9 and Ghost Mane. And bro, when Tech yeah. Nine was like, "Yo, we gotta have a song together," I was, I, I almost cried, man. That was, granted, my first favorite rapper was E40, but right after E40, 
uh, Tech Nine and Busta Rhymes. You feel me? All three of right. which have like amazing voices and flows and shit like that. But I'm like, damn, dude, I never thought in my life that I'd have a song rapping with Tech Nine. Like, what? That's amazing. Congrats on that. Seriously, and signing and everything. That's amazing. Right. Like, like I said before, like with Rob, like that would be the pinnacle of my my own career. Like, I love horror mostly. I mean, I'm I'm into all types of genres, but like. That's amazing. So again, like, congrats. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Rob and I now need to hop, hop on a collab. Yeah, That'd seriously. No, if if you did, I, bro. Everyone like, already, it, like yeah. especially with the fact that you've already worked together when you were younger, that would just be like a cool reunion. Right. So fingers crossed on that. I would love that. Oh yeah. Um. If you can choose one actor or actress, who would you uh, choose to work with, like past or present? Or even a rapper. Okay, hold on. Actor wise. <laughs> I feel like Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, he's hot. I got like, I'm straight. I'm straight, but I got it. He's, he's a hot man. Like, that guy's got it going on. 100%. 100%. Yeah. When he was younger, sir. Right? I feel that. I feel that. <laughs> Music wise, E40 or Snoop Dogg, rap wise. But if I could time travel, if I could time travel or, or bring him his his younger self here billy idol billy uh -uh. that's another that's another man crush of mine i think billy idol is like when he was like in his 20s there's there, he doesn't get much cooler than billy idol in his 20s you know what i'm saying right. like that's the, the that's the top yeah no yeah gr your taste <laughs> hell yeah your taste. <laughs> Uh, and my final question is, if you could give advice to anybody pursuing an acting career or a music career, uh, what would you tell them? Just don't stop. Just do not stop. Practice all the time. Don't tell yourself no. That's a big thing. I noticed a lot of people, I've even done it before, where it's like, oh, no, no I probably wouldn't get this because of this, this, and this. And it's like, well, why don't I try? Because they can tell me that those are the reasons that I didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? Like. I'm not going to stop myself because if I stop myself, I'm stopping myself from, you know, hitting bullseye, mm -hmm. you know, just because I think I did not hit bullseye. It's like, fuck it. Shoot a shot in the dark type thing. That's how I live my life. Just fucking shoot, dude. Like might as well. Like what's the worst that's going to happen. You're either going to get what you were going for or still be where you are now. And it's like, all right, you are where you are now. So who cares if you still are where you are now? Hopefully you go up. Right. Love that. Love that. <laughs> All right. Well, Dig, thank you so, so much. It was so great to talk to you. Uh, I mean, hell, I would love to work with you one day. So hopefully one day I get to work with you. Uh, oh, yeah. And again, congrats on everything with the music. I can't wait to hear more. And uh, can't wait to see where you go more with acting and singing and such. Hell yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. If you ever get into music, you know, I make beats and stuff, got features and whatnot. Everybody follow my Instagram is great Dag, one word. It's the same thing for Spotify, iTunes, Apple, all that jazz. YouTube is just my first name, Dag. But yeah, <laughs> gang, gang. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much, Dag. Have a oh, good yeah. one. Stay safe. Stay healthy. You. Likewise. Thank you. Talk to you later.